Quand il me prend dans ses bras, il me parle tout pas, je vois la vie en rose. Il... <laughs> oh man, bro, you're such a weirdo. Ain't nothing but bring my strap, nobody. How what? Oh, heck nah. Han, please help me up. Let's go and spoil the heck out of that sorry sap. Oh, gee whiz, please be careful with me. <laughs> hey, please no driving with that phone in your hand! Okay, stop number one. That sucker loves his Singapore made fung. Han, are you serious? Did you just spill some in there? Guess it's mine now. Numero dos. Chocolate helps dudes too. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Son! You know, I wouldn't be surprised if that fat giant answered the door instead. Hey, bro! Boom, baby. Oh. There is more to life than having a stinking girlfriend! Now I'm gonna spoil you with food and Skyrim! Every morning, when I get up, I write down my goals. And then I throw them in the trash, because that's where they belong! Okay, story time. When I was in high school, there was one boy I had a big crush on. We'll call him Robin in this story. He was one of the popular kids. He was funny, he was smart, and he had beautiful black hair. So, of course, my little heart exploded. But, of course, I didn't know how to talk to him. There was this thing he did every day. So here's the layout. My school acted as a school, a daycare, and a church. But these kids were only dropped off at the daycare. They had to be walked across the street to their school. But of course they needed someone to lead them. And he was their leader. So I hatched a plan. I always came to school early and studied in the hallways. The front door was always locked so he would knock. And I would always answer. Thanks was all Robin would ever say to me, and all I would say to him was, you're welcome. This became a morning routine for months, and this is getting kind of long, so wait for part two. To make those rainbows in my mind when I think of you sometime, and I want to spend some time with you, just the two of us. My high school crush, part two. So slushy runs were a thing, all thanks to our teacher slash principal, Mr. Norris. He was the homeroom teacher of the juniors and seniors, so if we were well behaved, or if he liked the ad we left him, we would get out of school and spend all of our money at the next door gas station on junk food. Now I loved to draw, but I was too shy to show my work to the class, until he spotted me. Robin suggested that I tried my hand at the board, so of course I couldn't say no. I had to make sure whatever I made was perfect. So I swallowed my pride and got to drawing. To my surprise, it actually looked pretty good, and I was pretty proud of the stuff that I made on that board. So did Mr. Norris. And we got our junk food! As I got more creative, I got more of an audience. At one point, Robin told me he was looking forward to every drawing I made every week. And that was the best reward. So now I had two morning routines. And one day, Robin asked me for a favor. Can I be vulnerable with you for a moment? I'm really sad. I'm an essential cashier at a hardware store. And you know what that means. A never-ending well of anger and selfishness by people that don't even know you. So much so that it actually messes with your mental well-being. So much so that you can't draw like you used to. And you're losing followers and you don't know what you're doing wrong. Instead of falling down that rabbit hole. I'm going to focus on what I'm thankful for. One. Group chats. Two. I got a big brother. Who is also my best friend. Three, I get to choose what kind of food I like to eat. Four, I get an hour lunch at work. Five, animals. Six, I got a mom and a dad that are still together. Seven, nature! Oh, look at that bleeding heart. Eight, my heavenly father. So what are you thankful for? A favor? It'll have to wait till we get to the art room. My high school crush, part three. In said art room were a whole bunch of unfinished paintings that we were making for our silent art auction as a fundraiser for our school. 
Now, before you guys get too excited, we weren't alone. Sorry to disappoint you. As Robin pulled me a seat, he showed me this beautiful painting of a beach scene. I was rather impressed. This is kind of embarrassing, but I really suck at drawing people. Can you help me? He was so cute when he was embarrassed. As I was making outlines of people for him to paint, I was desperately trying to find a conversation. I suck at talking with dudes. So, what are your plans for college? Oh, I want to be a photographer and go to college out of state. It just feels like there's nothing for me here. Well, if that wasn't bad enough, we only had a month of school left. If I was going to do anything, I had to do it fast. Mishé, since it's Spirit Day, you want to paint my face? Who me? You should stop it. Um, <clears throat> yeah, of course, Robin. Please don't screw up. Please don't screw up. It's got to be perfect. Don't screw up. Don't screw up. Don't screw up. Ah. So that happened. Okay, so over the next few weeks, I tried to find ways that I could be able to show him how much I cared about him, but it just looked more like I was longing from afar. And before I knew it, it was the last day of school. I was about out of time, but instead I was cleaning out my locker for it to sit the next three months, and... Is my next year gonna look like this? Empty and alone? This is my last chance to- Stop it! Why is that feeling there? I had to figure it out, today. My brother picked me up from school. I laid down on my bedroom floor and thought and thought and thought. Wait, why is my room so weird? Yikes, your headspace is so cluttered. You and me both, let's go talk outside. So you like him, huh? Of course I do. Why? Well, he's smart, beautiful, witty, and a kind person. He's kind, yet you're uncomfortable around him? Isn't that kind of important? I thought it was normal to be nervous. Well, sure it is. But not like you. There's a deeper problem than that. Pro what problem? There's more to you than you're willing to show him. You're afraid he won't like what you are. You know what I'm talking about. Stop it. You're a Christian. No, please stop. You've known him for two years. Shut up. And you still have no idea if he is. Shut up! This is really important to you. Your heart's been screaming that for a long time. This isn't what you want. Don't want to be alone. I've lost enough people in my life. I don't want it to happen again. This may be my one chance to find somebody that wouldn't push me away. And if he leaves, that means I'm back to square one and I'll have nothing. That. That is exactly why you need to let him go. It was never about Robin, it was about you. You wanted to have him so he could make you happy forever and ever and fix all of your problems. Those are horrible expectations for anybody. Think about it, have you ever once done something for him without expecting anything? I feel so selfish. Hun, it's okay. Work on yourself this year so you can fix those problems yourself. And you still have a shot to show Robin you do love him. You're right. I know what I need to do. It'll still hurt, you know. I know, but it's the right thing to do, for both our sakes. It was graduation night. Robin was presenting his valedictorian speech, but I couldn't for the life of me remember what he said. All I could think about was how selfish I had been. I completely disregarded him as a person and more of a happiness pill, which made me feel even worse. As he and his class walked down the aisle, I was preparing myself for my final goodbye. That was how I was going to prove that I did love him. That I was okay with the fact that he was going to leave. I was done with being selfish. No more tricks. Just a genuine farewell. <laughs> no. We can hug it out. All I could think was, I didn't deserve this. Not after everything I did to him. But this one act of kindness. He was a kind person, and he was going to make someone very happy. As I opened the door for him one last time, I found I was content and thankful he was part of my life. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on! PJs, blanket, lights, and play. Ooh, this must be an interactive movie. Quick, get your phone out. Mishé, you don't need me to comfort you when you feel down. If you don't want to be lonely, you are the only one who can fix that. 
Go ask people you meet how they are doing with genuine interest. You can't use me or people's compliments as a cure to fill that hole in your heart because that would only be a temporary fix. Life wouldn't be life without some trials to overcome. And that is why life is so beautiful. It is not a destination. It is a journey. Get the first letter of your favourite movie, the last letter of your first name, the second letter of your best friend's name, and the fifth letter of your favourite series. And that's your new nickname. I want you to smile today. But I don't feel like smiling. Well, it doesn't matter how you feel inside, you know. Take all your bad feelings and push them down, all the way down, past your knees until you're almost walking on What you guys want to ask me? What would you do if Pokemon was real? Oh, good question. I'd start off on Team Instinct and start with the Bulbasaur. On the way, I'd get a Wooper and a Routes. You got bad taste. Wooper would be my swimming buddy and Routes would be my therapy buddy. Once I find all my companions, I would open up a tea shop. Tea? You can't do that! I like that idea. Shut up, Blaine! Not done. Every day in the afternoon, the professor from the sky would come over, settle back and drink tea and have the best life. Connor and Pokemon was real! And y'all thought my high school crush story was over, huh? Well, I thought it was too. But I was wrong! Well, okay then. It was at a graduation party this Saturday for one of the gals that went to my high school. We were all having a good time, social distancing in the back, when suddenly her mom pulls me aside and says, Hey, I got the biggest scoop. She heard her daughter scream, Mom, she's TikTok famous! She sees the video and starts screaming too. And then crud hit the fan. She talks to my principal, she shows him the video, and he freaks out. She calls Robin's mother for a completely different reason, hangs up, remembers, and then calls her back. Robin's brother shows up, but they don't believe it's Robin. But then Mr. Norris confirms, and they freak out. They find his dad, and he freaks out. And if that wasn't bad enough, they showed Robin. Oh, gosh. The only thing I heard after that was they had a really good day. As far as I know, this is the last one. To prove to myself I did love Robin, I had to let him go and be happy he was graduating. But that didn't stop me from worrying. This was my senior year and I was afraid I'd be all alone and not change. Little did I know this would be my best year of high school. It was like something clicked inside of me. I was ready to take the next step to actually change. I rekindled some old friendships and even made some new ones. I got more serious about my studies, I spent more time with my family. As a result, I became more creative, I became more adventurous, more confident even, and more independent. And did I like this change about me? Of course I did! I was happy with the way things were going. Even formal was awesome. Graduated top of my class, and on my grad night, Robin came back and gave me another hug. So all I really want to say is, thank you, Robin, for helping me grow. Look at you, strawberry bean, flowers and trees. I love it when you buzz my way. Can you hear the other bees swarm in your sweet honey farm? I love it when you pollinate. Dominique, elle est clinique, s'en allait tout simplement Routier, pauvre et chantant En tout chemin, en tout lieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu Il ne parle que du bon Dieu À l'époque où Jean sans terre d'Angleterre était le roi Dominique, notre père, combattit les albigeois Dominique, elle est clinique, s'en allait tout simplement Routier Chantant en tout chemin, en tout lieu, il ne parle que du bon Dieu, il ne parle que du bon. Mmh. Bring my mask and some supplies. <laughs> uh, gonna need some of these too. Kiss my mom goodbye. Mm. For the last time, don't drive with that phone in your hand. Hey, dude. <laughs> Alright, let's get to work. Dude, don't try to get a paint pen out with your finger. <laughs> don't you think that Tom Hanks is probably one of the most wholesomest people we have on American soil? So we got these babies and these babies. Hey, how about we hide them in that one place? That one place. Incredibly delicious! 
I'm just going to say this place is super cute and they make amazing little sweet treats. Please tell me we're going to get macrons. Honey, you're calling my name. Now we've hid them. Now go and find them. Come on, we gotta wake up. That's right, come on, get up. Look at my face. If this lasts any longer, I'm gonna look like last year's crayon. We gotta go into town for supplies. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to your local arts and crafts store. Doesn't matter which one. For crisp, dark lines, I use these markers. For the paper, I use the mixed media because it's thick and keeps me up straight. For shading, I use these markers with gray shading because in a world full of colors and textures, you're going to want to pop out like a sticker. Emphasize everything else around you. Mom wanted me to pose for the Dino Club. Just warning you, these are expensive. Next is the fun part. You draw, then you shade. When you cut, leave a little bit of white. And now you just prepare for your video. I'm going to be honest, I really am not up to this. Let's go and look at the lake instead. Here's a greenhouse update. The pears in my garden are growing big. They'll be ready to pick soon. And so are the apples. My grapes are growing into little bunches and tiny cucumbers. I've got lots of tomatoes and it's not long until they'll turn red. As long as these guys don't get to them first. Welp, we're in your vibe spot. It's a beautiful day outside and I don't think that blanket is gonna help your art block. I just don't feel like doing anything, man. Not an option. Now gimme. That's my shield! You asked me to help you. Guess I'll have to break out the big guns. Wait, what do you think you're doing? Well, that song makes you think of nice things. I can't sing, dude! You can't even whistle! It'll help. Ow. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go and hide so no one can see me. They'll hear you all the same. What do you do? In April, I open my bell in May. I sing every day in June. I change my tune in July. Far off, I fly in August. Away. Mm -hmm. Today, I don't feel like doing anything. I just wanna lay in my bed I don't feel like picking up my phone I don't know this song Today I wanna salt and Tabasco What the heck is that? How does boiled water and Tabasco equal message in a bottle? And it's okay, I could do this Stop, stop, stop! Well, at least you got the job done. Please be careful with that. Let's take a look here. They tore my baby apart! <laughs> Allow me to explain. A long time ago, in a little village no one has ever heard about, there lived a little girl who was making her very first OC for her favorite TV show, SpongeBob SquarePants. Her drawing's name was Chlorina. Chlorina the Sea Monster. Uh, oh my, she, she was beautiful! A cheery waitress at the Krusty Krab independently raised her two nameless siblings and potentially had a will-they-won't-they they relationship with Squidward, which very likely would probably be a mistake. Or would it? I wanted to find out. Mom was cool, so she sent me to the library to look up the studio's address. I could already see Patchy the Pirate reading my letter. I sent the letter and waited for her one episode. Four years later. When the new season finally came out... Wait, that eye looks familiar. Wait... Those are her hands. Wait, wait. That's her ear. What the? Ah! Oh my gosh! It, is that the ocean? Yep, that's the ocean. And what's on the other side of it there? Cuba. And theoretically, how long for me to be? Don't no, try to swim to Cuba. Oh.
please stop. I need your help. By the time I'm making this, it's about three in the morning. I lost my spark. I love drawing, as you guys know, but this whole month, my mind's been an absolute blank. And even when I come up with something good, I get so nerve-wracked that people aren't going to like it or I'm going to offend somebody somehow that I just scrapped the whole idea altogether. I started making these videos because I cared about you guys so much and wanted to share my art with you. So would you mind sharing some of yours with me? It would mean the world to me. It doesn't even have to be art. It could be music you wrote or a story. I love you guys. A short direction to avoid dejection, but variations in occupations and prolongation of relaxation and combinations of recreations and disputation of the state of the nation and adaptation to your station by invitations to friends and relations by invitation of amputation by permutation in conversation and deep reflection you'll avoid dejection it was in the late summer where I realized I was tired of reserving a table for one I had also been running behind on the dating scene for about um 22 years now and not having many options where I was I dove into online dating I did some thorough research online and decided to use the site we'll call iSonata. Not being too excited about the idea, I gave myself a three month time period to see if I liked it. Weeks and weeks and weeks went by and all I saw was desperate crap. And when I was about to delete my profile, I got a message that excited me. This special person would leave such an impact, I gave them the title, My Kinda Sorta, But Yes, Boyfriend, Part 1. To keep his identity safe, we'll call him Mr. Peanut Butter. His personality just matched him to a T. The game was on, and I sent him a message. So I sent him a message, and little did I know, I matched with a ray of sunshine. He was two years younger than me, saw the best in everyone, and could never pinpoint just one career he wanted to pursue. He was the definition of bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. He went to many countries, but he fell in love with the Czech Republic and dreamed of being a missionary over there. That is a Christian girl's dream. Every day we would send paragraphs and paragraphs to each other. It felt like years went by, even in the not-so-good times. He truly made me feel special and look forward to every message he wrote. These two letters in particular stuck out to me to this day. At that point, I was dancing on the moon. He even started messaging my mom and telling me how precious I was to him. She was dancing up there with me too. Dad, in the meantime, was thoroughly checking to see if he'd be a strong spiritual leader for me. After weeks of writing novels to each other, we finally had the opportunity to meet. Shay, you're going without makeup? What are you talking about? Got some on my eyes. You're so brave. You're so encouraging, Mom. We'll be home later, Auntie Sarah. Bye, Mom! Bring that boy home! It was in the fall when my big cousin Sensei and I took an adventure to meet Mr. Peanut Butter in the city of St. Louis. He was going to be there for two days for a track meet, so he had us meet him in the hotel he was staying at. Went to the lobby, and then I started to worry. Sensei, I can't do this. What if he's secretly part of a cult he wants me to join? What if when he sees me he thinks I'm ugly and doesn't want to do anything with me? What if he has bad intentions? Shabby, that's why I'm here. If he turns out to be a creep, you and I can just have a girl stay in St. Louis together. I'm just worried. What if he's not the same kind person I've been talking to for weeks? Mr. Peanut Butter? <gasps> yeah, there's a girl waiting for you over there. Oh, good gosh. Good gosh. Shay! If I was in a dream, that hug certainly would have woken me up. Mr. Peanut Butter and his friend Todd showed us the park they were going to be running in. This certainly was the guy I'd been talking to for weeks, but I still worried. This guy was like Apollo, and he was hanging out with the Pillsbury Dough Girl. Why would he pick me? Despite my intrusive thoughts, he still treated me like I was the only girl in the world. He had such a positive outlook on life, and he made everything beautiful. Coupled along with my whimsical nature, we could literally be doing anything, and it'd be the best thing in the whole world. We even got lost in the city a few times, and we still had a ball. 
Time flew by when we were together, but the day did have to end. And when I went to say goodbye to him, he said, I love you. <clears throat> Hanging out with you. And that was my first date, yay! Once was a girl who lived on a rock in the middle of the ocean. She was alone most of her life, but never felt that way. The seagulls were her good friends. Every day she would receive letters in a bottle from a roaming sailor she never met. But his heart seemed so kind she fell for him immediately. She would write back to him and have her seagulls deliver it for her. She saved every bottle he sent to her. She eventually got so many of them that she made an entire lighthouse. When the light of the sun or the moon hit, it showed a rainbow in the clouds. One day the seagulls picked her up and took her to the sailor themselves. She stayed with him for two days and they had pleasant conversation with each other. On the last evening they were together, he made a promise that he would visit her on the glowing island late that winter. When it was time for her and her seagulls to leave, they prepared for his arrival.